Hey guys, Miss Marusik here, and in this video we're going to be talking about acid-base reactions and identifying what are called conjugate pairs. In the last video, the very last two examples that we worked were both what are considered acid-base neutralization reactions, in which we have an acid and a base that react together to form water and an ionic salt. And because the water is neutral as far as its pH is concerned, that's why the process is called a neutralization. We're basically can Canceling out the pH effects from the acid and the base individually. Now, in that video, what we did is we were given information to end up constructing a net ionic equation. What we're going to be talking about here is if we already have a net ionic equation for an acid base reaction, how can we identify who is the acid? who is the base, and what the conjugate pairs would be. Now, this identification uses what is called the Bronsted-Lowry theory of the definition of acids and bases. Uh, we have a couple different guys who contributed to our acid-base theories. Um, one of them was Lewis, famous for our Lewis dot structures, um, and another one was Arrhenius. Um, but Bronsted-Lowry, their definition is one that we use the most frequently, especially when we're addressing these conjugate pairs. And what they said is that an acid is a substance that loses or donates a proton. Now when we're talking about acids and bases, that proton is represented by H plus, a hydrogen ion which has lost an electron and so all we have left is a proton. A base is defined as a substance that gains or accepts a proton. And what happens is that you are going to have to have one substance that loses the proton, so you're going to have to have an acid, and you're going to have to have another substance that gains that proton. So it's kind of like you can't have an acid without having a base and vice versa. They have to be working in conjunction with each other. Now, the acid and the base are always identified as our reactant substances. But the product side produces what are called our conjugate pairs. Now here's where the naming gets a little tricky. If you notice here on acid, the substance remaining on the product side would be called a conjugate base, whereas the base on the product side would be called a conjugate acid. So we have to be really careful there because those opposite names get tied to each other. The reason why is because if I was to reverse the reaction, if I was to reverse the process, what I would see is that these would be acting in that acid base setup. They would be both, you know, gaining and losing those protons in the same manner that my reactants could. So I've just got to be really careful on that naming. Now there's a whole bunch of kind of some reminders here about conjugates. I know it was something that we did go over in pre-P, but it's been a while since we've done it. Um, but I really want to focus on these important things to remember. First off, a conjugate acid-base pair differs only by one proton. So literally the difference between an H plus. So I'm looking for formulas that are very close to each other that are only different by that one proton. Also, when we identify our acid and our base, those will always be on the reactant side and the conjugate pairs will always be on the product side. Also, something interesting about water. I know we know water is pH-wise neutral, which is absolutely true. However, water can behave like an acid or base with regards to Bronsted-Lowry's theory. So even though it has a neutral pH, when I'm identifying conjugate pairs, I have to be really careful because sometimes I can see water present as the conjugate acid or the conjugate base or even acting as the original acid or base. So I just have to be really careful with water. I can't assume it's always behaving one way or the other. It depends on the process. It depends on the reaction that we see. So let's look at a few examples of this process. So looking at our first one here, I see a reaction of HCN in this CH3NH2 um, making CN negative 1 and CH3NH3 positive 1. So what they're showing us here is some sort of net ionic equation that is taking place. And so what we want to do is we want to identify the acid base conjugate base and conjugate acid. So I'm going to start off with one of these substances and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find its conjugate pair on the other side. Something that looks a whole lot like it but is only different by a hydrogen plus one, a H plus one ion. And if I kind of look here, I notice 
that CN negative one cyanide is very similar to that HCN. Again, the only difference is that H plus one ion. And I noticed that as I went from one side to the other, that the process that occurred here is that I lost an H plus. So what that means is that this original HCN, if I go back to my Bronsted-Lowry definition, if it loses an H+, plus or donates an H+, plus, we would say that that substance is behaving as an acid in this equation. Now, what that means for my CN negative 1 here is that it is what is called the conjugate base. And again, it gets called that because if I was to reverse this process, it would end up gaining an H plus to go back and form HCN. And so because it behaves as a base in the opposite direction, that's why it gets that opposite name. Now, once I identify one pair pretty confidently, that means I kind of already know what the other pair is going to be. But just to double check it here, when I see this CH3NH2, its partner on the other side would be this CH3NH3 plus one. And I can see that the process that took place would be that we gained an H plus here. And so what that means is that this original substance must have been my base. And its partner here on the other side would be considered the conjugate acid. Again, because if it, we went in the opposite direction, it would lose an H plus just like an acid would. All right, let's work through another example. So Notice that not always do we see things that we necessarily recognize as acids or bases. Here we could kind of pick up this is behaving as an acid because we saw the H at the front of it. Uh, this happens to be one of those amine or nitrogen bases. But if I look at this and I'm like, well, good gravy, none of this looks like an acid or a base. Like what is happening here? Especially when the fact that we see that water being present. And so this is where I'm really gonna have to use my definitions to help me identify what's happening here. So I'm gonna start off with the first substance, PO4 negative three, and I'm gonna go try and find its partner on the other side. And I'm like, well, the thing that looks most like it would be this HPO4 negative two. And I see as I went from one side to the other, I gained that H plus. So if I gained that H plus, that means originally this guy was the base, that phosphate was our base, and this hydrogen phosphate would have been our conjugate acid. Now, again, once I know one pair, I kind of already know the other. If this guy was the base, then that means here this must have been the acid, and this must have been my conjugate base. But I could always go and confirm that based on what we know definition-wise. So I would ask myself, well, did this acid lose an H plus to go form my conjugate base? And I see, well, in fact, it did. It lost an H plus to go form hydroxide negative one. So this is a great example where water, even though it's neutral, is behaving as an acid, according to Bronsted-Lowry's definition in this reaction. Um, again, the PO4-3 and the HPO4-2 would be one conjugate pair. The water and the hydroxide would be my other conjugate pair. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take just a moment and see if you can identify the substances, acid, base, conjugate base, and conjugate acid in that last example there. So pause that video. Go try it out. All right, I'm going to assume that you tried it out. All right, so what I would do first is go find my conjugate partners, CH32NH. Here's its partner on the other side, so there's my conjugate pair. If I notice, I see that it's gaining an H plus from side to side, so that means this would have been my base. Here, this CH32NH2 would have been my conjugate acid. And so my other set here, my other conjugate pair, I would have had an acid that loses an H plus to go form my conjugate base. So here we can see that that water is behaving as a conjugate base in this particular example. All right, hopefully we're feeling confident with identifying conjugate pairs. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye guys.